Good morning, I'm Steve Jobs. Thanks for coming. The first thing I wanted to talk about today was our transition. We've got six things we want to cover. Six challenges that we've had. Completing the transition, communicating our strategy, shipping Next Step for Intel today on May 25th, signing up key PC partners, completing the enterprise solution, and getting developers to try Next Step. I'd like to spend a few minutes on each of these. Start with the transition. Now, we set ourselves a 100-day transition to move from a hardware systems company to a software company. We've succeeded in transitioning to a software company. In this 100 days, our factory's been closed, the inventory's been sold. We've seen the last of black hardware. I know. We really wanted to take care of our customers, though. And in addition to coming out with future releases on black hardware, we've sold our service business to Bell Atlantic so that service is going to be seamlessly carried forward. Our hardware designs are being sold to Canon. We've got a new senior team that's, I think, in, a, in fit and fighting shape. In addition to that, we've added some new members to our board of directors, two really fine people. Daniel Case, who's the president and co-CEO of Hambrick & Quist. Hambrick & Quist is one of the most respected investment banks in high technology. They've had a lot to do with Adobe and Sybase. And Larry Ellison, the president and CEO of Oracle Corporation, the third largest software company in the world behind Microsoft and Computer Associates. We think these folks can really help us as we form our strategies and execute them to be successful as a software company. And the one, one thing I'd like to leave the transition with is thanks. You guys have really hung in there with us when the going was tough. Our third party developers, our employees, our customers. And we really, really have noticed it and appreciated it. Thank you very, very much. The transition as of today. The transition as of today is officially over. It's behind us. And we are now, as of today, a software company. So communicating our strategy. What is our strategy to win? Our strategy in a word is based on objects. We, intend, we believe that there is a revolution happening of large proportions around object-oriented technology. And if we execute well, we can ride this revolution to some serious success. In the 1980s, we focused our computing technology on improving individual productivity. But in the 1990s, our customers are telling us unanimously that what they have to focus on is improving organizational productivity, operational productivity, automating the heart of the business. Now, we could help individual productivity with shrink wrap software, spreadsheets, word processors, the like. But we can't do that with operational productivity. Why not? Because you can't go buy an application to automate your hospital at Egghead. You can't go buy an application to do derivative commodity trading at the software store. You've got to write these things custom. That's the only way to get them. And the solutions we've had in the 80s just don't work. Let's take a look at some conventional wisdom. People absolutely want to get off their mainframes, right? Client-server computing is really hot. People want to get onto client-server computing. But there are some real dynamics changing in the marketplace. The first one is the demand for these custom apps is going through the roof, and people cannot keep up with them. In addition to that, the, the users are demanding faster and faster time to market. They need these applications in weeks and months, not years, because they're at the core of their competitive engines. We think Next Step is a breakthrough answer to this challenge. It is widely now agreed, even by our competitor, that you can build apps in Next Step five to 10 times faster than any other environment known to people. And when you build these apps, they are usable by mere mortals. These are not something that you need rocket scientists to use. They have a fit and finish that users have come to expect by their use of shrink wrap software. 
the maintenance costs are dramatically reduced because of object-oriented technology, which is a very, very important part for IS departments. And there's an ability to unify the desktop. The goal used to be, as you know, to get a computer on every desk. Now the goal is to get only one computer on every desk. And to have that one computer execute the custom applications, the shrink wrap productivity applications, and the legacy applications. And Next Step does all of that. Now, as I said earlier, this is catching a wave. Uh, Byte thinks pretty highly of Next Step. We're starting to get some recognition for the technology. There's going to be a lot of FUD about objects over the next year because they're going to get really hot. Everybody's going to have objects, object-oriented vacuum cleaners. <laughs> but be assured, Microsoft does not have objects. This is a quote from Business Week. And we, we agree with that quote. <laughs> now, where does this all fit in, the strategy of this object-oriented revolution? Where does it all fit into the rest of the industry? Well, as you know, we have client-server computing. So let's take a look at the operating systems that come to bear to make this a reality. They're different. On the server side, we have NetWare, we have Unix, and we have a contender in NT. They'd very much like to become a server operating system. On the client side, we have five. Right? We have Next Step, we have OS2, Solaris, Unixware, and of course, Windows NT. Now, let's take a look at some of these folks. OS2's premise, their entire premise, is based on better Windows than Windows. And the problem is that most folks don't believe that premise is sustainable when their source code license runs out next year, and most importantly, when Microsoft comes on much stronger with NT Windows. And so most people are very concerned that OS2's differentiation can continue. The next thing to note is that three of the five client operating systems are based on Unix. Next Step is one of them. Let's take a look at the other Unix contenders, Solaris and Unixware. There's another fundamental problem here. And it's very simple. Windows NT is going to be as good as Xmotif Unix. Maybe not this year, but certainly next year. And in this marketplace, if you're 25 or 50 percent better, or even twice as good, that's not good enough. The Microsoft monopoly will squash you. You've got to be five to 10 times better. And most people don't see enough differentiation here for that to work. And so we believe that those folks don't have the differentiation to sustain themselves against Windows NT and will therefore fade. <laughs> we don't consider this good news. We don't. But we do believe that Next Step is one of the few hopes to create an alternative standard. And this is what we're up against. Microsoft owns the standalone shrink wrap operating system business. They're in high volume with it. They have almost 100% market share. But they don't have objects, and they don't know how to deal with an enterprise-wide solution. We've got that stuff today. We've got to get it into high volume before Microsoft gets the technology. And we're running as hard as we can to do that to create this alternative so that we all have a choice. And I think we've got a real shot at it because it's going to take them a long time to get there. And this, this is why we're all here. Okay. That's our strategy. It hasn't changed a lot since we've become a software company. But what's changed is, is that we have liberated Next Step from the black box. We have eliminated the need to run it on proprietary hardware. And we have reduced its effective price from a computer system costing $10,000 list to a software package costing $795. We've got to ship it on May 25th. We made it.
products are shipping today. You can buy them on the show floor. They're in distribution. They're at some of our OEM partners. They're shipping today. They're very real. $795 for the user system, $19.95 for the developer system. Included in these boxes is a third-party product, CD-ROM, which has 46 demo applications all running on Next Step for Intel. In addition, we are supporting the standard six languages that we have for the last 18 months, English, French, German, Spanish, Swedish, and Italian, all off the one CD-ROM drive. And we have documentation in English, French, or German. Let's take a look at some of the new features about Next Step 3.1. The most important one, of course, is it runs on Intel. <laughs> and here's the system that you need to run it. A 486 of at least 25 megahertz. You do need an FPU. 8 megabytes for black and white minimum, 16 megabytes color, at least 120 megabyte disk. We run in 8-bit, 2-bit or 8-bit grayscale on VGA, and the 8-bit grayscale is gorgeous. In color, we run with local bus, VL bus, ESA, and PCI. We work with ATI chipsets, S3 chipsets, WinGens, QVisions, and a whole bunch of other stuff that's being done now. So this stuff works with almost every new color system that's been shipped. And it screams on the Pentium right out of the box. You can take this stuff out of the box, load it on a 46 or a Pentium, and it screams on a 486, and it screams squared on a Pentium. <laughs> the second thing is we've added support for portables and notebooks. There's half a dozen portables on the show floor you can see today, and they're remarkable. <laughs> Driver kit. Driver kit is a real breakthrough for us, especially as we enter the PC market with its myriad number of required drivers. We want to be able to write drivers really fast, and we want to be able to link them in dynamically. So we have come up with a whole new way of writing drivers. What we've done is we've said our object-oriented technology at the top of our system lets us write applications five to 10 times faster. What if we use that same technology to write drivers with? And so we've put object-oriented technology at the bottom of our system. And we've created a kit for writing drivers that allows you to write drivers literally five to 10 times faster, dynamically link them in, and work with Next Step for Intel. And we brought in a really great partner of ours, Pencom, and taught them how to write these driver kit drivers a few months ago. And this is a quote by Frank King, their president. They were blown away. These were extremely seasoned Unix driver writers. And they looked at dri writing drivers a whole new way, subclassing a disk driver, changing 10% of it, and having a new driver. And it all works, and it's all in Next Step 3.1. Fat binaries. Our marketing department calls these multiple architecture binaries. <laughs> um, fat binaries are also pretty remarkable. First of all, our developers have been able to simply recompile their applications and run them on Next Step for Intel, usually with zero source code changes. We went to WordPerfect as an example and said, please recompile for Intel. And they said, that's great. It'll take us about four months. We said, four months? It should take you about a day. And they said, no, no. Everybody tells us that, but it takes four months. Three hours later, they were running their product on Next Step for Intel with zero source code changes. <laughs> Macaw Cellular recompiled all their custom apps in an afternoon, no source code changes. Will tell, same thing, customer after customer, developer after developer. Now, let's look at the developers. They didn't want to have to put out a separate box, one to service the installed base of Motorola hardware and a new one for Intel. Let's look at system administrators. They didn't want to have two folders on the file server, one with the versions for the Motorola products, one with the versions for the Intel products, maybe another with the versions of the apps for a new architecture. So what we did was we looked at Next Step and realized that Next Step factors out most of the code into a machine-independent format anyway. And in a typical app has only about 25% of the bits on its disk or in its file are machine-dependent. So we created a way that from any Next Step platform, you can cross-compile that 20% for any other platform and stack as many of them as you want in one file. 
Therefore, by increasing the size of the app, typically only about 25%, you can have a version of the app on a floppy in one SKU that you stick it in either a Motorola or an Intel Next Step computer. It figures it out, launches, and goes, and does the right thing. You can have one icon on a server. You double click it from any Next Step workstation. It figures out what the architecture is, loads the right binary, and goes. And we can add future binaries. So in one SKU, one box, a software developer can, by simply pushing a few buttons on the compiler, generate versions of Next Step applications for an endless variety of architectures. The next one is Photo CD. <clears throat> we have worked with Kodak. Uh, a lot of our developers came to us and said this Photo CD stuff is revolutionary, but we all don't want to go license it ourselves. Could you please do it and put it in the system? We did just that, and the results are stunning. Okay. Fast Windows with Insignia Soft PC. Microsoft needs emulation technology. So they go to Insignia, the best guys on the block. And Insignia says, great, we'll help you out. But we want source code to Windows so that we can make great emulation products for other people. Microsoft cuts the deal. We've been working with Insignia for over a year now. We've made a lot of enhancements to our kernel so that we actually can run Windows really fast in Next Step Windows. And the product is going to be offered by Insignia for $249, I think. It's going to ship right on the CD-ROM this fall. And you're going to be able to run it for 60 days for free. And then you get to call them up and pay them if you want to keep running it. But we finally figured out how to run Windows really fast, much faster than any prior emulation technology. And you'll be able to see this very shortly. So next step. It's object-oriented throughout now. It's been developed over eight years. We've invested over $100 million. It's in its third release. We've got something more valuable than engineering. We've got customers who've given us a lot of feedback. And each release has gotten better and better. And it's proven and it's stable. And we've got 50,000 users today and growing. We're not stopping. We've already started on release 3.2. This is our first update release. It's going to come out the end of September, early October, primarily to add more drivers so that we can support an even wider range of PCs. And the good news is, inside every box of 3.1 is a coupon for 3.2 for free. So that's the products. We got them here today. You can see them. You can buy them. You can use them. They're real. Now the next thing is we have to sign up some great PC partners. We can't do this alone. We need partnerships. And coming into Expo, as you know, a few weeks ago, we announced that Ingram Micro, the largest computer distributor in the world, about a $2 billion company, is carrying Next Step for all of its resellers. We have about 300 resellers signed up already as well as Next Connection. They're our mail order distributor. And you can call them. I think it's 1-800-NEXT. And order third party products. And now order Next Step for Intel products as well. In addition, a few weeks ago, we announced some incredibly important partnerships for us. Data General, Dell, Epson, Hewlett Packard, and NEC, and Siemens Nixdorf in Europe are all supporting Next Step. And all but Hewlett Packard are preloading it on the Winchesters at the factory on customer request. Hewlett Packard is doing it in the channel. And we are really happy about this. We're pleased, though, that we can announce even a few more to add to this list at the show here today. And we expect a constant stream of these throughout the year. Compaq. Compaq is going to be supporting Next Step. They're going to be preloading it in the channel. You can see their PCs running Next Step today, and they're great. Digital Equipment Corporation. <laughs> DEC is going to be preloading Next Step on their Winchesters at the factory on customer request, and they're even talking to some of our customers about selling them computers painted black. Yeah. 
<laughs> Customer responsiveness. And lastly, NCR. NCR makes some wonderful PCs and they run very, very fast. And we're very, very happy to have them on board. And so if you add all this up, we think we now have almost every major player in the PC industry. And the few that we don't have, I think we can probably work with and get on board by this fall. And we are very, very grateful for these companies for jumping on the next step bandwagon. The other thing I'd like to point out is this is more support from the PC industry than any non-Microsoft operating system has ever got before. So we think we've signed up some key PC partners. What about the enterprise solution? What's that all about? Our vision is to expand the benefits of objects to an enterprise-wide scale, not just the desktop, not just the work group. In order to do that, we decided that we should partner with an enterprise leader. So we went out and asked our customers, who are the enterprise leaders out there? And they came back with three of them. IBM, Hewlett Packard, and Digital. All very good companies, all enterprise leaders. They didn't include a lot of other companies on this list because they said that they really were too narrow and didn't really provide an enterprise-wide solution. After many months of working on the relationship and working on products and seeing if our cultures meshed, we are very proud to announce that Hewlett Packard <laughs> Packard and Next have chosen to partner together to tackle this very, very important problem. We love Hewlett Packard. <laughs> they're, uh, they're the number one Unix supplier in the world in terms of revenues. They ship more Unix dollars than anybody else. They're the performance leader in risk. They build very fast servers and desktops. They are financially strong and very stable. We have a very compatible market focus with Hewlett Packard. If you look at the vertical markets they go after, they're the same ones that we have been going after. Clearly, they have a leadership in standards, and we are broadening into more industry standards, trying to set more industry standards. And they have a commitment to objects. HP was one of the earliest companies in object technology. We found we speak the same language. And so we're forming a partnership where Next brings the object technology, Hewlett Packard brings the enterprise solution, and we're calling it Object Enterprise, bringing objects from the desktop to the data center. As part of this partnership, we're doing joint development, we're doing joint marketing, and we're collaborating on standards. Let me go into a little more detail on each of these. On joint development, on the client side, you can run Next Step on HP's Vectris PCs today. You can go out and see it on the show floor, and it runs very well. In addition, we are porting Next Step to HP's PA Risk workstations as we sit here. <laughs> and we intend to ship that in the first half of next year. On the server side, we work with PA Risk servers today, work very well with them. But we'd like to do something even more. And so we are creating a product called Portable Distributed Objects, and we are porting our NetInfo network management software to HP servers. We'll be in beta on these things in Q3, and we'll ship them in Q4 of this year. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. On the marketing side, We've decided to start off by taking a step at a time, and the initial focus of our partnership is going to be on financial services. We're going to proactively market together into that marketplace. 
However, we would like to talk to anybody who would like to talk to us. <laughs> so don't be bashful if you're not in the financial services market. We begin joint selling today. We begin some joint advertising this week. We begin joint seminars in July, and we have plans to broaden the market focus beyond just the financial services market later this year. Collaborating on standards, I'm pleased to announce that we are committing, Next is committing, to bring out DCE, DME, and Corba products in the future, and we're going to collaborate with HP to do that. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about portable distributed objects. It was this term that I mentioned a few minutes ago. We think it's one of the core strategies to bring objects to the enterprise. Now, let me begin where we began, which is creating a system, next step, that could send messages between objects that ran in the same program. Right? That's where we were in 1989. Objects sending messages back and forth. But last year, we had a breakthrough. Because what if an object, a next step object, would like to send messages to another next step object that doesn't happen to be in the same program, that happens to possibly even be on another machine over a network in Tokyo? Last year, we were able to do that. We were able to take an object and put it on another next step machine, in Tokyo for that matter, and send it objects with exactly the same syntax. <laughs> but that's not enough. Because what if you want to send messages to objects that are not running on a next step computer? Servers don't need to run next step. They have years of development on backup and recovery and database software that they want to preserve by running their native operating system. What we are doing with Hewlett Packard is we are creating a version of our object messaging system and our runtime environment which runs in a Unix process on a native operating system such as HPUX. And in Q4 of this year, we're going to ship that product. And what that's going to enable us to do is give us truly portable distributed objects such as to that HP server over there. We believe we are years ahead in this technology over anybody else on the planet. Okay. Here's the four things we're going to deliver. Next step on vector PCs today. Next step on PA risk servers today. Next step on a PDO, portable distributed objects, on PA risk servers, Q4 of this year. Next step on PA risk workstations, first half of next year. Now what I'd like to do is introduce Wim Rowlands, who's the vice president of the computer systems division of Hewlett Packard. He couldn't be with us here today due to a prior commitment, but I got him to make a video. So could I run the video, please? Thank you, Steve, for giving me this opportunity to represent Hewlett Packard at Next World. I wish I could be with you, because I'm very excited about this relationship. HP is at the forefront of establishing the industry's most successful relationships. And they are a critical success factor for the new generation of computer companies. Hewlett Packard cannot succeed without partnerships with technology leaders. I'm extremely excited about the next relationship because it brings the strength of two companies together to offer a unique and powerful solution for our customers. It combines the leading object-oriented environment from Next with the leading standards-based desktop to data center peer risk platforms from Hewlett Packard. The HP Next solution embodies innovative technology and world-class enterprise computing. To be successful, I believe focus is important, specifically in establishing winning relationships. Our companies very quickly established a set of clear objectives with achievable goals to meet our customers' immediate needs. 
As a result, we have decided to focus on the financial services community. We chose the financial services due to extremely competitive environment, which demands development of rapid, flexible, and powerful custom applications to be deployed on HP systems. We are calling this total solution Object Enterprise. Obviously, other industries have similar needs, and as our success grows, we will expand to other markets with Object Enterprise. The next HP relationship holds great potential for both our companies, as well as our customers. Thank you again, Steve, for this opportunity, and I hope that this year's Next World is a fantastic success. Thank you, Wim. So, HP and Next, objects from desktop to data center, starting today. The last thing that we had as a challenge before us is that we know developers fall in love with Next Step. And they become some of our greatest internal champions. And so we want to expose developers to Next Step. And some of them, we, we want to remove all the obstacles in their way. And so we've come up with a program that we think might do that. And I'd like your feedback on it. First, we've come up with something called the Next Step Advantage. It's a little box, you open it up. It's got a book that guides you through building your first Next Step application, step by step by step. It's got a videotape with our best trainer, Randy Nelson, guiding you through it, <laughs> step by step by step. And it's got a floppy with all the source code examples on it. And we're going to be dropping these from airplanes. <laughs> In addition, we are creating a product which has Next Step 3.1, user system, CD-ROM, doc, the whole thing. The developer CD-ROM, not the doc, there's a coupon for half off on the doc if you want it, plus the Next Step Advantage, plus Garfinkel and Mahoney's programming book. Okay, all that together. But 3.1 only, there's no coupon for a free 3.2 upgrade. All this together for $299. Yeah. Okay. And so we feel that now there is no excuse for any developer not to shell out $299 and try to build a next step application, step by step, video, manuals, software complete. This is not crippled software in any way. There are no time bombs in it. It's the perfect situation to evaluate with only one hitch. You got to act fast because it expires July 31. Okay. So we believe that with this program, we can get developers to try next step. Now, what does this all add up to? It all adds up to customers. And we made a very simple video of a few customers who I think are all here today. And if I could run that for just a second, let's hear what they think about all this stuff. When we made the decision to use Next Step, it was really based upon the fact that we have a very fast-moving business. The only technology that was really available to do that was object-oriented development. And we found NextSip to be the best object-oriented development environment around. We're establishing a retail automobile loan application that will be used by 100 branches throughout North America to finance customer loans. The retail application is extremely mission critical. It really drives Chrysler Financial Corporation. It is the tool we use to deal with our ultimate customer, the consumer in the street. When we're finally deployed with the Axis project, we will be deploying about 5,000 seats of NextStep. We use objects to model our business environment because we feel that the business environment is more like an object-oriented framework than a process or procedural driven framework. Clearly, object technology gives us the capability that we have not had in the past to really focus in and get a handle on providing the business objective. It is not vapor like the, and it's not just promises like 4GLs and the case tools. This is very real technology.
We evaluated other tools such as Windows with DOS and Power Builder, but looking for custom applications, a database interface, and remote administration capabilities, we didn't find that on the other side of things. We did find that seamless interface and next step. The point is, by giving your best developers the best tools, uh, it encourages them to think about the solutions in, in new and better ways. When we make the decision to deploy uh, next step to a group of developers to build a product line. Um, the decision is not just because it's easy to develop or it's quick, it's also because it's easy to maintain. Um, the continuity of the objects um, is real important to us. However, I think the real benefit, the thing that, uh, that objects have given us, is the ability to develop software without having to write as much code. System House decided to base the Object Technology Center on Next Step because Next Step is the richest, fullest, and most complete object-oriented development platform available today. We developed our first phase of this application that we're working on in about one-third the time that we feel that it would have taken in other environments. And we had done things with OSF Motif and uh, Windows and, and other kinds of development environments. Object-oriented development really did speed up that process. On the development side, clearly um, anything from 5 to 15 times gain in software development, and that's no joke. Our programmers have been excited about Next Step because they believe that this is the uh, future of software engineering and development. I think I would have a big time revolt on my hand if I ever thought about taking Next Step away from my developers. They really do love it. I think Next Step will keep Chrysler very competitive. As long as we're able to react to the economic adversities and the globalization that is occurring today, we will stay ahead of the competition. Everything that we can do to take our best um, application developers that have learned our business, that have learned technology, and make them more productive is a good investment on our part. Um, Next Step does that for us. I'm never going back to developing applications in another way. Next Step is it for me. Uh, if I couldn't develop applications using Next Step, I'd become a motorcycle mechanic. We are very comfortable deploying on Next Step for Intel. Uh, the only issue that we have is that we have to uh, negotiate with some of our PC manufacturers the creation of a black box. We are getting off to a phenomenal start. And we're very, very happy about this, and we, we thank them deeply, and we hope to add large numbers to this very shortly. Now, it's my pleasure to show you this stuff, if that's okay. I have two PCs over here. And uh, I'm just going to go through a few very simple things just to remind us all that this is really next step. You know, when we move windows, we move whole windows, and we have menus. We have images here, full color, that move real time, just like they always used to. We can hide things. This is the workspace. We can hide it behind its icon and get it back. Very, very simple. It works exactly the same. And I'm going to use the mail system just to show you a few things that are exactly the same as I've, I've shown before in some cases. Here's all our mail windows. Here's a mail message. You know, forwarding replying, it's all the same. It's strange, after you use a PC for about an hour, you forget it's a PC. <laughs> Mitch liked this photo, so he put it in the mail message. Yeah. But again, you can see the quality of the color graphics that we're getting on PCs. It's phenomenal. OK. Um, here's an application. Uh, this happens to be uh, Word Perfect here. I can click on it. There we go. And as you can see, this is you know pretty standard old Word Perfect, same as it's always looked. They recompiled this in three hours with no source code changes. And here we are running it on a PC. Same as always. OK. Now let's uh, 
go look at some other applications and look at the file viewer. Time Magazine is now online. Our current collection includes issues from the 1920s through 91. You can use the digital librarian bo uh, bookshelf in my home directory to search this library quickly. Well, let's go. Same old file viewer. We've got an HP 9000 server right over there, as you know. So I'll just click on that and uh, go into users. And uh, this is uh, Nanette. Go into Nanette. Sure, there, sure enough, there's that Time Magazine bookshelf. And I can look up. Uh, Moon here, and it's uh, searching through a lot of stuff. 169 entries. How about Moon and, uh, oh golly, Apollo? 14 entries. Turn it off the server. There we go. So again, you know, pretty much works as always. Okay, let's go do some more interesting stuff. Here's our newsletter. Here's the template. Karen has the headline on her server. Kevin has the text on his PC. And please pick your favorite photo from Photo CD. Well, this is PasteUp, a very, very cool page layout program from Right Brain Software that just won uh, the Next World Magazine Best of Breed Award last night in its category. Here it is. This came from the art department, potentially. And uh, now I've got to go back here and say, OK, Karen has the headline on her server, and she's on the HP server. Go back to HP and users. There's Karen. And sure enough, there's that Adobe touch type document. And I just drag it over here and drop it in. For those of you that have seen this kind of thing before, you're right. It is repetitive, but it's all on Intel. OK. <laughs> so there's the text. Now let's, uh, let's go back to here and say, uh, Kevin has the text on his PC. Great. Let's go back to here, go into the network, go over Novell. Uh, this is a Novell server backstage somewhere in marketing. There's Kevin. There's the text. We just drag it in. Paste up automatically formats it, drops it in. There we go. Now I go back to here. Please pick your favorite photo off Photo CD. I happen to have a Photo CD that I brought. This is my own personal one. This is what turned me on to this in the first place, was making some of my own photographs into a CD-ROM. And uh, so I will go ahead and stick this in there. And uh, we will go back to here. And it's reading it now. It should show up any second here. There it is. And I just click on this and go into Photo CD and click on the overview. And we've written a little demo application that we ship with Next Step that just shows you all the pictures on the CD and lets you cut and paste them and things like that. These are some of uh, my family. <laughs> and uh, so let's go ahead and see what, uh, what this is. Loading it off the CD-ROM. There's a photo of, uh, of my son. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, zoom in on this. And you can zoom in at five levels. We could zoom in to bring 64 megabytes into the computer, but we're not going to do that. So I'll just get, a, get one that's a little bit bigger here. And the quality of these things is just phenomenal. Uh, and I can uh, go ahead and then select a part of this. Let's just say this part here. And I can uh, just copy it. And this will be pasted smaller at higher resolution uh, into, uh, let's see, and paste up. I've got to select this little arrow here. And then I just select Paste. And there's that photo right there. And I'll put it over here. And I can uh, even uh, run around the text here. So I'll turn on Run Around. Okay, there's one photo. Let's go get another one here. Let's, uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> let's see what this one is here. So there's another one. I'll go ahead and zoom into that. All righty. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab a piece of this one here and uh, copy it. Go back over to here and uh, paste it. And uh, let's go ahead and move this one maybe down like this. And uh, let's do a run around on it. You can see paste up doing its magic here. Maybe we'll take this one and uh, bring it to the front. So there we go. We created this newsletter off a uh, files on HP servers, off files over Novell Netware, off photo CDs, all on Intel.
OK. Uh, now let's go ahead and build a custom app. So here we are. Uh, now I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to build a custom app uh, with objectware. These objects that you can buy right out of the objectware catalog. And I've picked, uh, picked two of them. I've picked RightBrain's object called dbmerge. And I've picked Pencom's object called the query object. And then I'm going to also combine that with PasteUp, RightBrain's shrink wrap out of the box page layout program. And I'm going to build a simple custom app. And if I do it right, it'll, it'll actually work. So <laughs> let's find out. So let's launch Interface Builder here. And uh, I've already preloaded those objectware palettes. When you buy objectware, they just are palettes that get added to Interface Builder. And so here's the, pen com or here's the right brain one, and here's the pencom one. So let's go ahead and uh, make a new application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the pencom object right down into, uh, into where I drop my objects for this application. And the same with the right brain one. I'm drag a little top hat down and say, I want to use these objects. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to drag some things into my window that I know I need. <laughs> Please. Uh, there we go. Uh, a photograph here. And uh, then I need to go back here. And I know I need a, uh, a button. And I want uh, one of these uh, pop-up views. Now I'm going to build a very simple app. So let's go ahead and see if I can get it right. And we're just going to assume, we're going to pretend like uh, we're in the uh, car loan business like one of our big customers really is. And uh, we're going to assume that we want to take a look at our loans and find out who the deadbeats are and send them letters. OK. So here's our elements on the list. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the button and the, uh, the pop-up list and make those a bigger font so you can read them. I'll make them Helvetica bold. There we go. That's a little easier there. Great. Now, let me go ahead and hook these things up. What I do is I click on uh, Pencom's object, and this shows me all the things in the database. So cars and clients. And I'm going to go ahead and drag some things into this view so I can see them, like you know, the title, the uh, first name, the last name, the address. This looks boring, but it's not as boring as programming it, believe me. <laughs> OK, and we'll make the address a little longer here, maybe. And probably to stay a little longer. And uh, let's see, probably we have to make the zip a little longer here. OK, so you get the idea there. And uh, now what we'll do is also we'll change this thing to uh, allow me to put a big font in there. So I'm going to put the spacing a little bit bigger on that. Now let's go ahead and hook it up. We've hooked that up. Um, let's hook up, uh, we've got a picture of the vehicle here. So I'm going to drop that in there. And then uh, we have the loan status description. And so I can drop that onto this uh, pop-up menu here. And I, let me go ahead and connect the pop-up menu. And I can connect that uh, to the Pencom database object. And that didn't work because I did it wrong. I have to double click this thing. And then drag it down here. And it shows me all the messages that their object can understand. I'll say qualified fetch, make a qualified fetch. So now, I should be able to actually go test this puppy. Let's find out if I did it right. Log in as me. OK, we're in this Oracle database running on that HP server right now. And I've got current, late, delinquent, and repos. So let's look and see who's current. Uh, and it's uh, sucking all that information out, unJPEGing a picture, and dropping it up there. This guy's got an expensive car. And as you can see, these are all uh, cars from one of our customers, Chrysler. <laughs> OK, now what I'd like to do is, you know, I can go see, and let's, let's look at the deadbeats here. OK, two of them. So one's got a car that's not even shipping yet. Uh, <laughs> now, Let's go automatically write a letter to these guys saying that we want uh, them to bring the car back or pay us. How do we do that? Well, what we do is um, the first thing we do is we drag a, uh, a connection from this button down to RightBrain's object, and we say send to paste up. Right? And the other thing we do is we go in to we have a template 
that comes from our database object, from the PenCom database object, that I can just drag right in to the right brain object. And I think that might be all I, oh no. I have to tell the right brain object what I want it to print on the letter. And so I say, this is the table view, and this is the image. Make those connections, and now, if I did everything right, which is questionable, when I go look at this again, I can say, show me the repos. Right? OK, and then I can say, oh, I forgot to relabel my button. But this could say, send them a letter. I push this, it launches paste up, brings it up, pulls the data out of the database, unjpegs the picture, formats the thing, shoves it in, and gives me a letter. So again, I can't stress enough. We're using some objectware here. We didn't have to build any of this from scratch. We bought, well, we didn't buy it, but normally we'd buy it. <laughs> and, uh, and we used RightBrain's paste-up program right out of the box and messaged it with its API. So this is, we believe, the future and the present of object-oriented computing. OK. Um, what I'd like to do now, really quickly, is uh, show you something here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, this is very helpful when you have a legacy app, you know? And if, if, if this is what we need to do, if this is what we need to do to get in the door and get over those hurdles so they can really experience next step, it does provide a side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> this is Excel here, running right here. I can go in and change these numbers here. You know, I can go change this to, uh, to uh, you know, 100. Boom, graphs redraw. I can cut and paste out of it and all that stuff. And so I have this you know, whole thing running here. And I can run it right alongside, as I said, you know, the other kind, brand B. <laughs> and customers can get a really good feeling for which one they want to use. OK. So let's quit this thing here. There we go. Don't save it. This next thing I'd like to show you is uh, something pretty near and dear. We've been working on this for uh, about 18 months. This is not a product introduction, but rather it's a technology demonstration of a technology that we hope to productize in the first half of next year. And what it is, is it's, ne it's called Next Time. <laughs> it's software only. Video compression and decompression, just like QuickTime, just like Indio, but with a slight difference, which is it's really high quality. <laughs> but there's a more substantial difference be beneath the surface, which is those other schemes have opted for a very asymmetrical compression technology, which means in the case of QuickTime, it takes 150 times longer to compress than it does to decompress, which means to compress a minute's worth of video upon playback, it takes 150 minutes. As you can see, this limits its potential. You'll never do video conferencing with this as an example. What we have chosen to pursue is a technology based on wavelets. And this technology allows us to do symmetrical compression and decompression in software. So I'd like to play you the first publicly seen next time film clip totally in software, totally running right on the 486 here as you see it. I thought this might inspire you as you prepare for your upcoming battle against Microsoft.
in addition to the high quality video, at least relative to this technology class, uh, what you were hearing was full 44 kilohertz stereo sound and all of it was coming off the computer in real time. We also have the ability to see a little bit bigger. That first window was 320 by 240. The second window is 640 by 480. And uh, the quality degrades a little bit, the frame rate degrades a little bit, but I thought you might like to see it anyway. I have you now. What? Yeah! You get the idea. <laughs> okay. This is uh, actually uh, an interesting combination of technologies on Next Step, this next one. There's a weekly animated program in the UK uh, called South Bank Show. And this animation for that show was created with RenderMan and the 3D kit on Next Step, which we introduced last year as part of 3.0, and spooled frame by frame to next time to capture it for motion video. So this is a combination of these technologies coming into play together. Let's take a look at it. It's pretty short. idea what kind of show this is. <laughs> so R&D is alive and well at Next. The last thing I wanted to uh, share with you today is something that's very near and dear to my heart because I'm on the go a lot just like a lot of, a lot of us are and that is uh, Next Step running on a portable here. I have my uh, handy dandy compact portable right here. And there it is on the screen. I've got, uh, I can take a look at my files if I want to. And for those of you that have never seen Next Up on a portable, it's an amazing thing. You can see it running on several out there. Here's our uh, famous bear, courtesy of Mitch. And Time Magazine. And all the apps that you've come to know and love run just fine on the portables. We even have wireless email going as well. So, you can see some of this stuff out on the show floor. We really appreciate your coming here today. We hope that the announcements we've been able to make today will give us a spirit of confidence and momentum going forward that we really can create an alternative to Microsoft and the system software business with the revolution of object-oriented technology and with the help of partners like all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>